U.S. dollar as the kingpin in the global economy, and its continuing devaluation is destined to impact the rest of the world. If that devaluation is sudden, I suspect many people will be blindsided and panic. It could happen at any time with the right trigger. It could happen on any ordinary day on Wall Street, even a day like today. The Dow, Nasdaq, and S&P 500 are all up. Gold and silver are at all-time highs, and U.S. unemployment is officially at 11 percent. The U.S. dollar is in decline. The Federal Reserve prepares to do its quantitative easing trick at the Wednesday bond auction, pushing the dollar down even more. China announces they won't buy more U.S. notes until the U.S. stops devaluing its currency. The news hits the wire, and a nervous Wall Street shudders. Over the weekend, the president holds private meetings with the Federal Reserve and G20 leaders. On Sunday, the Asian markets open and go into instant meltdown in response to China's rejection of U.S. bonds. The Asian markets quickly drop 5%, then 6%, then 7%, then slip into freefall. Other currencies start to slip, and soon an avalanche of sell orders sends markets around the world spiraling down. A few hours later, Monday's opening bell at the New York Stock Exchange triggers mayhem. People dump stocks and sink everything into precious metals and commodities. In minutes, gold jumps 300 an ounce, then 400 an ounce. Silver quadruples. Everyone wants to sell, but no one has any liquidity except China and the Middle East. European countries raise interest rates by 3 or 4 percent to attract buyers, but there are few takers. Unprecedented competition for the remaining global liquidity forces volatile markets down even further. A half hour after the New York Stock Exchange opens, its computer circuits pop under a deluge of sell orders. Wall Street computers freeze and trading is halted for the entire day. Tuesday morning, still see circuits jammed with sell orders and the New York Stock Exchange is unable to open. With no buyers, the market is dead. Federal Reserve announces a hike in U.S. interest rates to attract bond buyers and generate liquidity. Global markets don't like the hike, but stabilize somewhat, although they are still down 6 to 7 percent from Friday's close. Just two hours after the Fed's rate hike, buyers return and the NYSE is able to open. Throughout the week, global markets take a beating before they find new support levels. But in spite of the U.S. interest rate hike, global confidence in the U.S. dollar continues to erode. Gold and silver continue to rise. Palladium hits a high. Global currencies keep falling. By the close of Friday, traders around the world are walking on eggshells and having a hard time sleeping. That weekend, the Fed meets again with the president, then announces a second interest rate hike. Currency markets instantly respond. Banks in Western Europe hike interest rates in sync with the United States. On Sunday, China has first crack at the higher yield U.S. bonds, but buyers are still scarce. By now, the public is definitely aware that something is wrong. Desperate people begin to panic, and there are a lot of desperate people. On Monday, the opening bell at the NYSC triggers a glimpse of hell. Traders around the world become net sellers of equities, bonds, and Western currencies. Everyone wants out at the same time. Panic and confusion sweep the globe, and markets are in free fall again. This time, nothing stops them. Within minutes, electronic trading systems around the world short-circuit under the load of sell orders. The NYSE shudders to a halt in what will become known as the Great Wall Street Freeze. As billions of dollars in wealth vaporize, the shock ripples throughout the international financial world. Stunned by the devastation, 
Some traders choose oblivion. Others obsess about how to recoup their losses if and when the market reopens. Others join the rash of suicides. Others slip away quietly and are never heard from again. What can be done? World markets need a solution fast to get going again. The solution will look like nothing we've seen before. In an emergency meeting, the International Monetary Fund and G20 leaders conclude that the quickest way to jumpstart the paralyzed markets is to restructure all westernized debt in one fell swoop, set new international lending policies, and issue a global common currency. A spokeswoman for the IMF G20 coalition announces that all the global governments are aligned on a solution and have everything under control. There is no need to panic. Of course, panic sweeps the globe, and we see a massive social breakdown. Over the next 24 hours, most nations activate their police and militia to quell scared and angry rioters. People empty their ATMs and food stores, loot gun shops, and run banks into the ground. The damage to life and property becomes staggering. Just nine days after the Great Wall Street freeze, militia and police around the world managed to quell the riots and governments began to tally the damage. In the United States, thousands are killed and injured and property damage is in the many billions. Fourteen days following the bond auction that triggered the crash of the U.S. dollar, every major exchange has lost vast value. And some of the smaller exchanges are completely flattened. The financial world is in shock. But elsewhere, the fisherman still fishes. And the farmer still hoes his fields. And the baker still bakes his bread. After nearly two weeks of intense meetings, the IMF G20 coalition hammers out the solution. They announce the formation of a temporary global unification exchange system, or GESS, to oversee a restructuring of the international economy. GESS issues a new coin of the realm, engraved with a unifying motto, Unus Familius Pluris, Pluris Familius Unus, one serving many, many serving one. The world now shares a common currency. Next, Yes mandates that all nations immediately cease printing their money and prepare for a global currency exchange and debt reset. Just 14 days. You know, that's a fairly short time frame for these type of changes to work their way through the global economic system. And of course, this is all conjecture. But make no mistake, We've already seen significant changes in our international economy and more changes are on the horizon.